It's been a month and a half since Russia invaded Ukraine. Missiles and projectiles hit Ukrainian cities and villages for weeks. The Kremlin calls it a special operation and says if this operation wouldn't have started, Ukraine could attack Russia. That's what propaganda tells to Russians. The same they hear from priests. Если бы не сделали ничего, через два года полетела бы сюда, без всякой пощады, без всякого предупреждения. И если бы они сюда зашли, резали бы нас с вами. This is the archpriest of the Russian Orthodox Church, Andrei Tkachov. He is from Lviv, Ukraine. He studied at the Moscow Suvorov Military School, then the Military Institute of the Ministry of Defense of the USSR, the Faculty of Special Propaganda. Afterwards, he returned to Lviv and went to theological seminary, but didn't finish his learning. However, he somehow became a priest. From Lviv, he moved to Kyiv, was a presenter on the pro-Russian religious TV channel Kyiv and Rus. In 2014, he fled to Moscow. And there he calls on Russians to fight against the Ukrainians. There are thousands of people like Andrei Tkachov in Russia. Their main ideological inspirer is none other than the patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, Kirill. His civil name Vladimir Gundyaev. He is one of the ideologists of the so-called Russian world and an ardent supporter of the Putin's actions. As a mantra, he repeats the words of his boss, we did not start this war. Делать нечто, что могло бы причинить вред другим. Patriarch not just supports Putin's actions, he blesses the Russian troops for the war. He did this, for example, in mid-March, when he presented an icon to the commander of the Ross Guard, Viktor Zolotov. It was supposed to protect the occupiers in fights. Zolotov thanked in the best Russian traditions. He reported as if to the commander-in-chief. Довести до вас и до всех присутствующих здесь прихожан о том, что войска Национальной гвардии совместно с вооруженными силами Российской Федерации выполняют все поставленные задачи в ходе этой Obviously, the main task of the Russians to destroy cities and kill civilians. Ukrainian churches and temples are also under fire. Crushed walls, torn roofs, broken windows and stained glass, and some have even burned down. Interestingly, among these buildings are those that belong to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate. Despite this name, this church allegedly has no direct subordination to Moscow and is not financially connected with it, and bishops are elected by Ukraine. But Moscow confirms the choice of the Kyiv Metropolitan, de facto controls almost every step. Since 2014, when hostilities began in the Ukrainian Donbass, the Ukrainian Moscow Patriarchate Kate did not openly support any side of the conflict. Its priests said, our parishioners are on the both sides of the front. But this year, on February 24th, after a direct Russian invasion, the head of the Moscow Patriarchate Metropolitan Onufri finally admitted that Russia had begun hostilities against Ukraine. Prosimo vas, Vladimir Vladimirovich, остановить войну. And while the head of the church asks to stop the war, priests of lower rank support it in every possible way. For example, this priest from Kyiv. These symbols and chat with the occupiers in the smartphone were found in his house. According to police, he cooperated with the Kremlin's intelligence services. This man was detained on February 24th in Hostomel near a downed Russian helicopter. Advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs Anton Gerashenko stated this is a Russian saboteur. And investigators from Bellingcat added not only this saboteur, but also a priest for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate. <laughs> Київ, сам виродок з Ждомельської області. Живу 
в Киеве. Я живу в Буче, но приписан в Киеве. It's not the first time that Russia has actively used priests in the war against Ukraine. This scheme was tested during the annexation of Crimea in 2014. According to the chairman of the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people, Refat Chubarov, at that time the churches on the peninsula became weapon depots for the occupiers. Now, after Russia's open invasion of Ukraine, Kremlin priests are not just supporting the war, they directly call for expanding the geography of the conflict. After all, they want Russia to capture as many countries as possible. На подходе Грузия, отказавшаяся участвовать в санкциях. Но ну, а что будет с Прибалтикой, сами можете догадаться. Сегодня они поставляют как перевалочная база оружие для истребления славян. Today the Russian Orthodox Church has offices around the world, among them 28 European countries. There are cathedrals in London, Berlin and Paris. Did you hear what the priests were saying? What do they say about Ukraine? What do they say about Western countries? In Ukraine they spoke of support for Russia and Putin's actions. They became saboteurs and informants. The Russian Orthodox Church turned priests into Kremlin agents.